Hello traders, investors, cryptocurrency nerds and anyone who is new to the space or just looking for a bit of help with their portfolios. Okay, this is my ultimate crypto portfolio video and I'm going to be going over some of my own thoughts about how you can build a really strong cryptocurrency portfolio that can make you a lot of money within this bull run and also just have a lot of fun whilst you're doing it. Okay, so first of all, let's just go over some of my golden rules here about what you should be looking for when building one of these portfolios. So I have it set here as a starting investment of $10,000 and we're looking for around $100,000 from that. I believe that that is realistic if you do have a well-managed portfolio. Um, whereas, of course, there is no financial advice within this video. I am just someone that is talking a load of nonsense on the internet and giving my opinions, okay? This is something that has worked for me in the past. There's no guarantee that it will work again in the future, but hopefully I can just give a bit of, um, a few of my opinions uh, to help yourself make your own decisions within this market when you're researching uh, projects that you would like to buy or sell or any of that kind of thing. Okay, so first of all here, um, just some golden rules, like I was saying. So diversify, <coughs> never go all in on one asset. So spread your investments around to stabilize your portfolio. Now, this is a really key point, okay? You don't wanna be going in on one asset, for example, Bitcoin only, because then you're just exposed to one thing. You're completely just, at the mercy of what that one asset is doing and you're never going to realize like proper gains from that unless you get really lucky onto something um unless you're diversified okay this is a really good way just to spread your money out but not too thinly uh in order just to make consistent gains and just have a really nice healthy portfolio okay and that's what we're looking for from this secondly you need to have a plan okay so have a plan of what you are buying what what you are selling uh, why you are buying it and when you will sell it, okay? So know what it is that you want to get into, know what projects you want to get into, <clears throat> and then also know why you are buying it and when you want to sell it. So very important here again, okay? You don't just want to be jumping into anything that's pumped or anything that's got hype behind it um, because then can you really tell yourself why you're buying that? Is it just FOMO? Is it just like, oh my God, this looks good, everyone's buying it, I want to get in? Or have you really done the research? Do you know what this project is? Have you checked the chart? Is it looking good? Does it look like there's actual gains to be had from this? Or again, like, are you just jumping in blindly? Uh, and also be aware of like when you want to sell it. So again, go back to the chart, look at where price is on it, have a plan of what you think, like where you think price can go to. And um, yeah, just do the research accordingly with that. Okay, then discipline. So stick to your plan. Don't go throwing your capital at every project that pumps or soon you'll have nothing left. Be diversified, but don't spread yourself too thin. Do not buy other people's bags. And this is very important here, okay? So every time there's something that pumps, okay, we can look at what Shiba Inu, okay, had a massive million percent pump or whatever it was. Don't get caught buying other people's bags because there's someone else out there that bought this asset a lot earlier than you got in at a much better price than you and they want you to buy at the price that you're looking at it now okay charts going up is an advertisement for sellers to sell their bags into people that are less experienced than them do not get caught up into that hype okay do not give in to that fomo do your research properly and be aware like of course like you want to be getting into assets when they're low when not too many people are talking about them. Yeah, there can be a bit of hype around there. Pe things can have these market cycles and you want to be able to understand when to get in and out of those assets again. So then we have adapt, okay? Be prepared to change and adjust your plan regularly. Crypto markets can change in an instant, so always be ready to rebalance. And again, very important, okay? So this is a very fast moving market. You've got to be able to nurture your portfolio and you've got to be prepared to rebalance it when the time comes. Um, again, if price is going up or if price is crashing, know what you want to do within those scenarios, okay? And then finally, sell. Sounds, ob sounds obvious, but you'll never make any money if you don't sell. Do not get married to a particular asset. At the end of the day, it's just a ticker symbol and a chart, and that really is all it is, okay? Sorry, I'm in the way, <laughs> but you can see what I was uh, saying there. It is just a ticker symbol and a chart to you. None of us are directly involved in any of the projects that we're investing in. Okay, we might, some of us might like stake the projects or there might be some kind of benefit with that. But we're here to make money, okay? And that's the main thing. And um, if you get caught 
buying an asset low it goes up high and you're too afraid to sell because you're like oh my god i'm still like really think this project's amazing it's going to go to the moon and then it crashes you might not get an opportunity to get out of that price ever again okay and that's just the just the reality of this so an example for me i was accumulating um cardano uh throughout 2018 2019 <clears throat> early into 2020 i was averaging in around 30 cents and i had a plan that i wanted to sell it when it hit three dollars i was very confident that it would hit three dollars but when price came up there i was like okay that's hit my target i was thinking clearly when i made that target so therefore i had made a calculated risk on my investment that's where i wanted to sell at a 10x and uh, that is where i sold it and you can always get it back in later when price retraces so again using this cardano as an example price retraced from three dollars down to one dollar it's an opportunity then to get back in if you think that it's going to go on another run okay so do know where you want to sell an asset that's that's massively important okay so now we've got that out of the way um a few minutes on my golden rules let's start to have a look at a few ways in which you can start to build this portfolio okay so here's a quick example and this i think is a really good starting point <clears throat> for anyone who is fairly new to the space just starting out okay it really doesn't matter how much money you have although i've used ten thousand dollars as an example you can be doing this with a thousand dollars you could be doing it with a hundred thousand dollars i think this is a really good portfolio to have where you can reasonably expect to get a 10x out of that during a, a really good bull run in the market as long as you are nurturing that portfolio as you go along so here we go bitcoin around 20 percent portfolio stable coins ethereum your blue chip tokens themed projects and your low caps okay and i'm going to go over in just a second what all of those are but here is just some example percentages obviously you can change that for as you go along um you may want to put a bit more or a bit less into each of those but that's just a really nice starting point to have so yeah let's go through some of these examples okay so first of all bitcoin okay so i have it here as 20 to 30 percent of your portfolio so the pros with this are it is the biggest asset and it is the lowest risk okay we're all here for bitcoin this is the reason cryptocurrency exists this is the reason you're in this space in the first place it doesn't matter if you got into crypto because of a doge pump or because of safe moon or anything ridiculous like that bitcoin is the big guy okay that is what everything trades against um it is the reason every project that's out there exists and you have to have it in your portfolio if you're going to have a healthy portfolio within the crypto space so another pro with this um it's easy to trade so if you can master how to trade it you can grow your portfolio exponentially and again this is what i do okay so i trade bitcoin every single day and i make bitcoin every single day i am getting bitcoin from the market as much as i can because i believe in this project and it's great because you can then use it to buy and sell other assets which is my next point here okay it is acting like it's uh well it's like the gold and you can buy all sorts of other things well not so much anymore but <laughs> you get the idea it's like it's that central currency that really everything else within this ecosystem works around so you can trade it you can gain money if you are trading it and then you can use it to put into other assets but that does bring us to the cons okay so it does move more slowly than other assets you're never going to get a <clears throat> ten thousand to one hundred thousand dollar portfolio just by holding bitcoin okay unless you're really lucky and you get in at the right time you get out at the right time and maybe you're trading it to get those exponential gains along the way then despite the hype it will never make you rich on your own again just what i kind of just said okay so it's it's not going to go up 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 forever that's very unrealistic to think that it's a um a different beast than what it was 10 years ago the gains will be diminished now and we're talking percentages rather than x like two times three times four times your portfolio from this now you're just looking at percentage gains and if you choose to trade it you may lose your investment okay so trading is not easy okay you can't go into this space thinking oh i can just trade myself from hundred dollars to a million dollars it's not going to happen not at least not for quite a while okay you need to have real discipline and you need to really understand the space if you're going to be able to make that kind of money so that's bitcoin okay 
essential to have in your portfolio, in my opinion. The second thing that's essential to have in your portfolio, which is a weird one most people kind of overlook, is your stable coins. And once again, I do say 20 to 30% of your portfolio in these stable coins. So we're looking at USDT, USDC, BUSD uh, as examples, okay? So I think you probably would know what USDT is by now. Uh, USDC is from Coinbase, BUSD from Binance, okay? These assets are tied to the dollar, which means there is no risk. Of course, if you want to believe some of the tether hype and things, but we're not going to go into that in this video. Once again, it can be used to buy and sell other assets. So you can utilize those dollars in order to then manage your portfolio, move it into other assets, move out of other assets into the, back into the stablecoin. It stabilizes your portfolio. So if you're seeing really volatile moves within the market, it just keeps that portfolio kind of stable so it's not too erratic and moving all over the place. And then you, it can be utilized during extreme market conditions, either by hedging against a threat so say price is going up, 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 and you think, oh my God, it, th this is kind of nearing, this is all getting a bit crazy, it's going to crash at some point. <clears throat> you can move into this asset or these assets in order to hedge your risk and be ready for any, then being ready for any opportunities that do come. Okay, so then say the market crashes 50% after a big move up. You have hedged against that threat and then you're able to exploit that opportunity by moving into Tether as price is going up and then moving out of it back into these assets, for example, Bitcoin, after you get one of these crashes, and then that portfolio management once again uh, in order to really kind of compound on those gains that you're making just by holding these assets. The cons on this, uh, it will not appreciate in value. Okay, it's tied to the dollar, so it's never going to, it's never going to change. <laughs> it's one dollar. Um, it does slow down the progress of your portfolio if you're just holding it on its own and you're not utilizing that. So be aware that this is something that you, you want to be utilizing within your portfolio. Um, not just holding it there forever because it will slow down your progress <clears throat> if you're just holding it. And of course, once again, if you do trade, choose to trade it, you may, once again, lose your initial investment. Okay, once again, trading is not easy. So you can trade almost like hundreds, probably thousands of assets against these stable coins. But if you're holding this stable coin as your collateral on there, then uh, you, c you can end up losing your portfolio or your investment within this by trading it, okay? So big opportunities to make money with these stable coins, but also it's crypto, it's trading, also opportunities to lose it. Ethereum, okay? And a nice little uh, animation here on the side. So Ethereum, I'd say good starting point, 10 to 20% of your portfolio. So once again, it's a large established asset, fairly low risk. It's been around for a long time. It's not going anywhere. Okay, Ethereum's here to stay, um, despite some of the FUD that may be there. Ethereum's here to stay. It's never going to disappear. Um, it can be used to trade, buy and sell other assets, same as the other two. It has multiple use cases, so you can utilize that and you can work within the ecosystem. For example, using MetaMask to buy and sell, to be using that ecosystem um, and be working within it. NFTs, non-fungible tokens, okay, you can buy and sell, you can mint NFTs using Ethereum and you can use it to pay for transactions within other places within the crypto space. And it acts as an index for other altcoins. So if Ethereum's doing well, other altcoins are generally going to be doing well also. Ethereum's, if Ethereum's not doing well, then a lot of other assets are going to be seeing those pullbacks at the same time. Your cons for this, it's a fairly slow mover. We're looking at big, large market cap again here. So we're looking at smaller percentage gains. Now you're probably going to get a bit more than you would out of Bitcoin. It's a bit more volatile. It has the potential to go a lot higher, but also a lot lower. So you do have smaller percentage gains compared to some assets in the market. It's a fairly slow mover though, overall. You have gas fees for using the ecosystem. So we're talking portfolio management here, but I always recommend that people do use and utilize the projects. That's what they're here for. Um, and if you're using the Ethereum that you have in your portfolio, there are gas fees involved. It's quite expensive to use this protocol. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got a decent sized portfolio before you really start using it. Okay. Especially when you're thinking just to make a trade or to buy an, mint an NFT on Ethereum, it's going to cost you somewhere between like from as little as $20 to up to like $100 sometimes. Now, hopefully that will improve in the future. 
but do be aware that there are gas fees there. And if you choose to trade, again, same with all the other things I've just mentioned, if you choose to trade it, you may lose your investment. Okay, so that's kind of that first 50% of the portfolio here. And now we're getting into the really kind of interesting part of it. It's taken me 15 minutes to get here, but we're getting into the really interesting part now. And this is, we want to start here with your blue chips. Okay, so by blue chip, I mean tried and tested, um, been here, they've stood the test of time. They, um, again, just fairly low risk, but you're looking at the potential for larger gains from this um, if you do hold them within your portfolio. And we're not talking utilizing and changing them up so much, but we're talking like just good projects, okay, within um, certain kind of conditions on here. So some really good um, kind of rules for this. You want to be looking at stuff that's within that top 100 market cap. So you can be going onto coin market cap. You can take a look on there and you want to be looking for coins that are within that top 100. <clears throat> Things like Doge, ridiculous, I know, but it's there. You wouldn't want to buy it when things are really high again, so just be aware. Um, Doge, Litecoin, Link, Cardano, XRP, XMR, Tezos, ERS, NEO, VeChain, IOTA, Nano, Dash, projects such as this that have been around they've been around the block um and if you know when is a good price to get in then these can be really good assets to add to your portfolio but don't don't take too many of them okay choose three or four that you may want to hold three or four that you like fundamentally for example i'd never hold doge <laughs> um however i would hold Chainlink. i would hold cardano i hold a little bit of monero and there are these projects that maybe you just prefer um, and they're the ones that you can put into your portfolio. So again, pros and cons. These ones have stood the test of time. They're proven across multiple market cycles, which means they've had gains in the past. Now there's no guarantee they will do the same thing in the future, but history does often repeat itself within these markets. And when they do have a, their market cycle, you can see really big gains from this. We know what Cardano's done this year. We know what Dogecoin's done this year. Anyone who's been around for more than a couple of years, you'll know that Link went from a few cents up to like $50 or whatever it is now. Um, Litecoin, again, not doing very much at the moment, but when it does have a cycle, it often does really well. <coughs> okay, and that does bring us to our cons. So within these assets, there can be long periods of downtime between price movements. You have to be aware of that. Uh, there's a lack of excitement from retail and new money within these projects, okay, because they're not the brand new cool thing. Um, it goes through, they go through long periods of time where it just doesn't have that excitement. But those are the times when you want to be getting into these projects, okay, when the noise is kind of gone and uh, they're just sat there, low price, and um, not really many people are talking about them. But there's no guarantee that past performance will equal future success either on these, so... We know Doge has had a big pump. It might never do it again. It probably will, but it might never do it again. So you do have to be aware of that uh, as you do with any of these assets. Okay, so these are my blue chip ones. Um, so just the large market cap, the ones that you don't have to do too much with again within your portfolio. Then we have the themed tokens. Now this is the really fun stuff. <coughs> okay, so for this... This is your chance to really put your own personal stamp onto your portfolio. And I have this set at 20 to 30%, okay? So it's going to be a pretty big percentage of your portfolio. It's the stuff that you want to be managing the most. Um, the stuff that you really want to keep up with the performance of whatever it is that you choose. And um, the stuff that will really kind of relate to you personally. So it's probably the easiest stuff to buy because it is the stuff that will get you excited. But then it's the hardest stuff to sell as well because you're, it's so easy just to think, oh, this project's amazing. I really want to hold this forever. And then not being aware of just, we're in here to make money, okay? So for this, I'd say choose two or three themes which interest you. Immerse yourself in those ecosystems and diversify within them. Then focus on the newer projects, okay? So we're looking here as a first example at DeFi coins. Okay, so DeFi, Decentralized Finance. These are coins that are categorized as that Decentralized Finance. Uh, we're looking at things like Uniswap, Luna, AVAX, Avalanche, Phantom, Aave, CRV, Curve Finance, uh, GRT, The Graph. 
okay, things like that, which run with, within this DeFi space. So maybe you're researching DeFi, you think this is really cool, you want to have that within your within your theme. So this can be the first theme that you choose. And within that, I'd say maybe two or three assets within that theme are a really good starting point as well. So two or three themes, and then two or three assets within each of those themes that you're going for. Next, we have layer one. So layer one are protocols built on the like the initial layer of uh, blockchain, so kind of the Bitcoin idea. Uh, we're looking at things like Solana, Polkadot, once again, Luna, uh, Harmony, one, Avalanche, again here, Moon River. So these are just some ticker ideas uh, that would be layer one solutions. So again, if you think that these layer ones are really good and they've done really well this year. So if you do like the look of these projects, then those are great ones to get into, okay? And the same thing, choosing two or three to um, <clears throat> within this uh, this theme. Then you have your layer two solutions. So these are scaling solutions for Bitcoin or for Ethereum, taking the blockchain to that next level. And you're looking at stuff like OMG Network, Raiden, Matic, Seller, uh, Proof of Authority, or point, something like that. <laughs> um, and these are your layer two solutions. So when you go in and you, you do your research, maybe you think, okay, I really just want to get into like this next phase of the blockchain. And I want to be using these rather than these layer one solutions, because I think that scaling is a big issue. You can then choose those. Okay, then we have, of course, gaming and NFT, really, really on kind of hype at the moment. Um, so Mana, Decentraland, um, Theta, Axis, Axie Infinity, uh, Chili's, ILV, which is Alluvium, a really cool game, um, like a Pokemon game within the blockchain. Sand, uh, Sandbox, Atlas. So this is Star Atlas again, look, a really good looking project. So if you're really into your gaming and your NFTs, then I'd say these are some good places to start. <clears throat> and again, choosing a couple of those to put into your portfolio. Buy them at a good price, okay? Don't buy stuff that's gone crazy. If you're looking at something like Axie Infinity, it's had a really good run already. So again, non-financial advice within any of this video. This is just my own thoughts. But if you really like the gaming idea, instead of looking for something that's pumped a lot, look for something that's still fairly low in price. Something like Alluvium or Star Atlas might be better suited for you or you might find some other really cool uh, nft gaming tokens that are even lower than that then we have your exchange tokens okay so during any bull run your exchange tokens are going to do well they have big utility and um, if people are trading on the exchanges and you've got retail money coming into these exchanges it's very natural that these um, exchange tokens are going to do well from that so you've got bnb which is from binance You've got FTT, which is the FTX token, BIT, which is the Bybit token, as uh, so this is a very new one, um, KuCoin shares from the KuCoin exchange, Uniswap, SushiSwap, DYDX, which is a decentralized exchange, and CRO, which is crypto.com. Okay, so all of these are exchanges where you can buy and sell crypto assets, um, but it's a really good idea to be holding some of these portfolio tokens as well. So you may choose that as one of the themes that you want to hold. And then I'd say if you trade on the exchange, <coughs> hold some of their tokens, okay? Um, yeah, just a, <laughs> another really good uh, theme themed project within um, the crypto space. Then you have your launch pads, okay? And this is getting into the slightly more obscure stuff. So by launch pads, I mean um, projects that launch other projects. So in here we have Unizen, Launchpool, Pokestarter, Binance Smart Chain, and Ray. These are um, cryptocurrencies which have websites where you can basically take part within their ecosystem, staking their tokens, and then you can gain access to other smaller tokens within that. So they launch new projects. So a really, really good um Again, a really good kind of section within this the blockchain space uh, that you may want to get into if you're looking to really diversify out into these brand new projects that are coming out all the time. Then you have your oracles. Okay, so by oracles, this is linking blockchain with um, like legacy finance, um, fiat um, markets and just real world kind of stuff. So Chainlink, Band, Rep and TRB. 
other tickers that you want to be looking for that are, are your oracles. So if you do think that there's a, you're really interested in the way that DeFi links with traditional finance, then these are really good tokens to look at. And then finally, the other um, <clears throat> the other theme that I have within here are your real world solutions. Okay, so this is things like um, basic attention token. Okay, so if you think advertising on the internet is annoying, you don't like using an ad blocker, this is a really good one to be using. HNT, which is a decentralized um, internet network, basically. QNT, which again, similar to an Oracle, but working in a different way. They're linking blockchain technology into the traditional banking system. RSR, Algo, Filecoin, decentralized storage, uh, Power Ledger, it's quite an old one, but um, if you're into green energy and things like that, then this is uh, one of those tokens that could be of interest to you. Okay, so this is the themed part of your portfolio. And then this is really the part where you go do your own research. Okay, I've given you some ideas of some like really nice tickers within here. So there's a lot there to be looking through. But if you're brand new to the space, take a look at this stuff. And just research what DeFi layer one, layer two, NFTs and gaming are. Find the stuff that interests you. Again, don't get too diversified between them pick two or three that you like. So maybe you want to go layer one with NFT and maybe hold a couple of exchange tokens as well, then choose that. And then again, don't go for everything within within each of these uh, themes because quite often you find they move together. So often what's like, what's the point in holding all of them and then minimizing your returns that you can get from them because it all averages out. Go for the stuff you really believe in. And then if say, for example, you were holding within your exchange tokens. FTT had a really good run. Um, and you might see that, for example, KuCoin shares is really low on price. You might think, okay, well, I want to stay with my exchange tokens here, but I'm going to reallocate 50% of my FTT tokens because that's gone up really high in price. And I want to put them in KuCoin shares because I believe that KuCoin is a good exchange and I believe that their tokens can go up in value. So it's, again, that portfolio management that you're looking at. Whew. <laughs> and then finally, we are going to look here at uh, your low caps. Okay, so fairly small amount of your portfolio, five to 10%. You could go even lower than this if you're brand new to the space. And again, choose three or four on these, don't choose many, and do not spread yourself too thinly. Um, you want to do the research on the stuff that really looks solid on here because there's this is where, yes, you have the biggest potential. This is where you are going to see 100x, 1000x, the really big money that can really change your portfolio within just a few days. Um, there's massive gains to be made here, but there's also big risk. Uh, so be aware that they may go to zero or you may need to hold these tokens for a long time to realize profit. So you want to be getting into stuff that you like um, and you've done the research on, don't just go buying anything because Joe told you to or something like that, okay? Um, on these, you're looking for X gains, not percentage gains. So whereas with the other assets, you may be happy with 50% increase in price, and then you can kind of diversify from there. I'd say if you're going into the low caps, these are the ones that really do move quite a lot. So again, like you want to be aware that pr price of course you want to be know when to get out but try to aim high because we are here to make money um and sometimes we've seen we've seen multiple thousand percent gains on a lot of these low cap coins and if you do find the right ones then you can very easily make these x gains so just have patience with them okay allow them to do what they want to do wait for that hype to come in and then when everyone's talking about them you're the one that got in early how I was going on about earlier. You're the one that got in early and you can sell those bags to someone coming in new to the space. So you want to be able to hold those bags until the hype's really there. And then you can just go, right, you can take my bag. I'm selling it. I'm out. I'm going to enjoy that money. I'm going to re-diversify and rebalance my portfolio because of that. Okay. And for these, you're looking at low market cap. You want to be looking at something below a billion dollars. And really I'd be going like below a hundred million if you can. Um, bit more risk involved with those but uh they're really nice projects that you can you can easily find okay <clears throat> and they're how you those are the ones that you make the kind of big x gains rather than percentages you want to find ones that have not had a major market cycle so these are ones where the chart just looks fairly flat 
or has gone up maybe 30 40 percent not really done a lot and just kind of is chopping around find the ones that have done that if something's already done a thousand percent it's not really going to be within this category you might then look for it to be within your themed tokens or your blue chip tokens or something along those lines then you want to look for fresh new projects um that are better than the old ones okay so <clears throat> um look for the new stuff don't go jumping into something just because it's a billion dollar market cap that's been around since 2017 it's unlikely that you're going to see those big gains from those because they've had their time they've had their day look for the new stuff look for the stuff that you believe could get a lot of excitement um that's providing something new within the space um then look for assets with a good community okay good social media presence and marketability so you don't want to go for something that just no one else is going to really get um so an example of that i don't know maybe i'm wrong but if someone was having okay here's like a thing to make books available on the blockchain or something yeah it's kind of a lot of people might like that but it's not really going to capture crypto people's um attention you want to be looking for the really cool stuff the stuff that's doing something different um stuff within the metaverse or stuff within DeFi. Uh, stuff that can really make a difference to the world and, and those kind of projects that excite you uh, which goes on to my last point here choose a project that interests you okay and this is very important because you can be holding this for quite a while once again do not get married to a project um, it is just a ticker but do get into the ones that interest you because then you're not going to feel so bad if price does go down and you may need to just rebalance accordingly and um, uh, yeah something you're happy to hold for a while okay so that's basically my my portfolio ideas and we're just going to go on to this last page so a few little tips just to end with okay so choose assets which are linked some way to your blue chip and theme token allocation so if you're going into your low caps um you might want to find stuff that's within those same ecosystems so again as you do the research you'll find that something like solana has a whole ecosystem underneath it something like polka dot has a whole ecosystem underneath it and you can pick these low cap tokens from from within that ecosystem so i say for example if you like solana then you may want to hold the ftx exchange token ftt within your themed area okay if you hold polka dot you may want to check out some projects within that ecosystem such as kusama or poker markets your low caps can also be within larger ecosystems for example launch pool again pretty a very low cap in itself uh, but it was the launch pad for the unizen token which you can now stake uh, that is now a launch pad in itself where you can get other tokens such as cirrus Demetra, and other stuff on there okay so these launch pools are really cool because they do give you access to these low cap tokens when they first arrive on the scene know that your initial portfolio is just a starting point be prepared to nurture it okay so you've got to nurture it this like anything um don't just buy this stuff and expect it to do that 10k to 100k it's not going to happen you've got to work on that portfolio and be aware again where to buy where to sell how to know maybe you're wrong on a, on a idea or maybe you want to really kind of um go in a bit harder onto something that looks like it's going to do really well be on the lookout for new projects keep up with the times okay so again these small caps will help you with that so if you're nurturing your small caps and your theme tokens you're going to be constantly looking for these new projects and that will do you really well in the future okay so then you can go you might find a 10x you might find a token that does 10x can sell that look for the next one okay and then you buy more of that token it does another 10x sell it look for the next one and you just keep repeating that compounding those gains making money okay and that's why we're all here then know that crypto is not a get rich quick scheme longevity is the key stay in the game long enough and it will change your life and i do believe that again there is no financial advice in this video but it's done it for me it's done it for many other people within this space and if you know what you're doing and if you really put in the research and you do your own research on this then um there's no reason why you can't do really well from this space this is why what it's here for it's really good fun um and there's a lot of money to be made within the space itself and finally yeah do your own research and never follow blindly what others tell you to okay so although i've made this video um this fairly long video about what my thoughts are on the market in general um and how you can build a portfolio don't just do don't just go buying everything that i've said in this video because 
it all could go to nothing. I don't know. Um, do your own research. Find the stuff that really interests you. And hopefully you'll you'll get a really good portfolio from that and um, can have a lot of fun trading it, um, using the ecosystems and, and everything that you've kind of chosen to get into. And um, yeah, just making some good money along the way. Okay, so that's it. That wraps up my, uh, I guess, my portfolio lecture on this. Um, I hope it was useful for everyone. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Please do click the like button, click the subscribe button, click that notification bell, come and join our community. It is in the description below. And uh, yeah, have a great day, week, month, year and everything. Um, thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.